Y'all, I am over it. I've planted nearly everything I had uh, waiting in the shrub pile. There are some plugs left over that I was waiting to plant until the geothermals installed, which looks like it might be two weeks out, uh, and some boxwoods that I dug up that had been planted earlier to kind of sell this home. Uh, and that's the only things I have left planted. So the only containers are the boxwoods and I've got them laid out. I'm going to show you kind of what I'm going to do in this video. But I am tired. I am worn out. We might be having our first frost tonight, uh, which is kind of early for our area. It's not super early. I think our average says around the 14th and it's Monday night. Uh, I'm shooting this Monday night and you'll probably see it Tuesday or Wednesday. But it's probably the earliest if we do have a frost that earliest frost that I've seen since I've lived in Ohio since 2016. So um, that's kind of extraordinary and that's why I worked really hard uh, to get everything in the ground this weekend. The first thing I want to show you is I picked up some things that I have not shown you in a video and I got them planted this weekend or last week. I haven't showed you a whole lot of actual gardening plant content in a week, but this Weeping Colorado Spruce, which is Gorgeous. So weeping Colorado spruces don't get too wide if, and that's a big if, you keep them staked. And so if you don't keep them staked, they kind of fall and tumble around. So we're going to keep this one staked for a little while. I might find a different stake that's a better color than this bamboo and some better staking mechanisms other than this tape. So it's just a little more aesthetically pleasing here but it's really gorgeous. So as I've told you, and I just removed a few spruces when we moved into this home a few weeks ago, um, blue spruces particularly suffer from like a needle cast in our area or decline, and they have to be sprayed. Um, so I'll be spraying this one regularly. It may be the only spruce that I plant on the property. If you have one, sometimes it's not so much of a problem, but if you have multiple, it just kind of attracts sickness for some reason. So we'll keep this one staked up a little bit. I'll let it fall and tumble a little bit. I was going to put a Mugo pine here in evergreen, um, but I thought this would be a nice evergreen element instead. Very upright structure right next to this lamppost. And then we can underplant it with annuals next year. This will be a really nice swoop here to plant with some sun patients or something. Uh, like that. The Crimson Century Maple back here, this stays really skinny as I mentioned in other videos, so we're not going to have any concerns with it growing into this spruce or anything. But it was super windy this weekend and it's leaning a little bit. It was a containerized tree, it wasn't ball and burlap, so it doesn't have a super heavy root system and I need to, I don't like staking my trees, but to get this thing through winter and we kind of tend to have really windy winters, I'm going to have to stake it at least to keep it a little upright so it can get rooted in. And then we'll see, evaluate in spring after our spring winds come through and whether it can kind of hold itself up a little better. Sometimes you have problems with trees like this. They're just kind of top heavy um, because they're so upright. And this one actually has a pretty thick stem, so it's not bending or anything. It's just kind of weighted quite a bit. I don't know if you can tell, my lips are super dried out because I was out here from like 7.30 to 5 o'clock on Saturday. And I got out here super early on Sunday as well and spent um, most of the evening outside too. And so my lips get really chapped in the wind and the cold weather. And so I'm a little uh, wind chapped right now. But... I want to show you all the beautiful things I picked up. I also picked up some um, Let's Dance Can Do Hydrangeas, and that's these right here. Um, I put these in my design that I showed you about a month ago when I was laying out this bed, and um, they were looking better a couple days ago. The blooms have faded a little bit with our colder weather, but they're still trying to produce buds this late in the season, so I think this is a really good variety. I did pick these up and plant them at the old house this past spring and really loved them. They were doing pretty well when I left, and so I thought I gotta have them in this garden too. So they're gonna be a nice statement piece here. They get three to four foot tall and wide. I don't know here in Ohio if they'll really ever get that tall and wide. So I've grouped them kind of close, but I pushed them back far enough that if they do get four foot wide, they'll kind of just grace the edge of the sidewalk here. And something else we can talk about that I haven't showed you that I worked my tail off last um, week. Like I did a ton of gardening, come home every day and worked out in the garden until sunset. 
and it took me two days to get this bed finished. Now, in the original design for this bed, there is a swoop here that goes further out the drive here. Uh, I'm going to do that in spring. I called my mulch man and had to have more mulch delivered, and I got all that he had for the season left over, and he said he wouldn't be getting any more until spring. So I didn't want to add that swoop and use all of my mulch up because I still got to mulch the other side of the sod sidewalk there around the house and I just wanted some left over in case I needed to fill any spots after planting. But I'm liking how it's looking, other than the garden hose strode about there. So this area right here will probably start somewhere around this um, star power juniper, and it'll just start making a gradual swoop here. Um, and it may come a little further out. I don't know. I'll have to feel what my design is in the spring and what plants I've ordered and purchased. Of course, I can always extend it out as much as I want. Uh, I would kind of like to leave a grass path here, though, uh, as something just kind of walk through. But I picked up my Fire Chief Arborvitae. I would have preferred these to be further out. Um, but I wanted these to get settled in for next year so they'd put on more growth. And so that was a little bit of a compromise there. But I, they're still kind of roughly located. I would have probably moved them just about here. Um, but I love the color contrast with the blue juniper here and this crimson century maple. So there's a lot of color contrasts going on in this garden. Uh, I planted some irises that I dug. My friend Jess dug. Um, in July when she came to the garden and so I put popped them here and there. Uh, I got some great garden plant shrubs that I was going to shoot a video on because I purchased them uh, several weeks ago and they showed up and I never got around to it and then I just had no time to shoot video this weekend getting everything in the ground. So I got an Arctic Sun dogwood. I really love these colored dogwoods. This one will have yellow and orange stems, so I thought it'd be nice at the front of the border here. You can see it coming up the driveway. It'll be a nice contrast to the uh, star power juniper there. This is another one of the Sugartina crystallina clethra. Uh, and I've got these boxwoods tucked in here. I don't know what variety these are. These were planted against the house there when we moved in and they were freshly planted probably in the spring-ish. And I removed them and dug them up to plant all of that stuff up there. I think I'm going to do a little S here, uh, just kind of to dot around this bed instead of something too formal, just kind of whimsy. So they're not placed exactly, but I just kind of moved them and plopped them here since this is the only bigger shrubs that I have left to plant. And I think that's actually kind of cute. So it'll give me some space to plant here. Uh, this is the Venus dogwood that'll grow up eventually. So I don't want to plant bigger shrubs here. I'll probably place perennials that could eventually be moved if they had to. Uh, this is an Illuminati Tower Mock Orange. I ended up placing the Summer Gold Maple, uh, Japanese Maple right here. I got to looking at the sizing on it and it didn't grow quite as fast or quite as big as I initially thought it did. So it said it would only be maybe six to eight foot tall and wide in 10 years. So uh, this is the Kindred Spirit Oak, and it only gets three to five foot wide, and so this right here will fill the space. And the reason I planted it here is because when you look this way, which I've showed you on video, we'll have this green, this Kindred Spirit Oak, which is a nice upright yellow, and behind there is a Thundercloud Plum, so it'll be purple yellow, green, and this is kind of a bluish looking evergreen. You can compare it to the boxwood here. It's a reason, one of the reasons I picked it up. A lot of these online appear to be more green than this one is, but I'm really loving like just how gray this looks. So loving this one. I planted these honey apricot um, roses here from Proven Winners. These are the edible um, roses that you can eat. They're I mean, you can eat all roses, but these were bred specifically, and they smell really pretty, and they're also this beautiful peachy color here. So isn't that gorgeous? Look at this. This is like my favorite rose color. 
and not i wanted my roses so when i was designing the space you'll notice all the roses are kind of tucked exactly at the same i didn't want them at the front of the border in case they get kind of wild but i didn't want them so far in the bed that you couldn't just take a step off the sidewalk and give a sniff if you wanted to sniff a rose so i put them close enough that maybe i could just put a little stepping stone for someone if they wanted to smell stop and smell the roses literally as they come into the house they could um, and this is not the final edge either of this bed let me walk over here so you can see what this is looking like uh, i'm gonna get an edging tool and do that probably in spring i am all out of battery power to do any more edging this year and so i just kind of use this uh, contractor's paper around here and it'll look kind of rough, but in the spring, we'll come and clean it up. So the edge right there, you can tell, is really rough. It'll be more gradual, but I just didn't want to lay down any more contractor's paper and deal with that. Uh, this is a morning light grass that I picked up. I told you that was a variety that I really liked. Next spring, it'll be really gorgeous here, and I provide a nice contrast of variegated uh, and texture. Blow in the wind, you can see how it's doing now. I picked up a Ruby Slippers Oak Leaf Hydrangea. I really love this variety. It bloomed really well for me last year at my other house in its first year planted. And the fall color is incredible on this variety. You can see how dark it is right here, and it'll be a really nice contrast to this um, red bud right here, which is the rising sun. I'm having trouble with my plant names today, but I think it'll be nice back of the border here. Really pretty. I did put the pur pink lilac here, so it'll fill this space. And I've left this area open to put a path to the yard off the sidewalk here. So that might be a winter project that I work on. It'd be something easy to tackle during winter um, or as much as I can in Ohio during winter, probably November project or early March project before planting season starts again. But I'm really pleased with how everything has come along so far. Uh, as we're beginning to wrap up. Now in the last video, you watched me make this bed next to the fence. And I planted the, all of these things in it the same day. So I did that video Saturday morning. Uh, and then after lunchtime, I started planting this bed completely up. So I didn't give it any time. Uh, I have planted in those immediately. Typically you wanna wait the two to three months for the grass to die back. Um, but priorities, man. Getting the things planted was the priority. And so I'll go through quickly what I planted in here. I've been seeing also a lot of comments recently. They're like, I can't believe you did all that yourself. I'm like, I do all this myself. Other than getting the trees planted this year, both at my prior home and this current home, the bigger trees, I do all this myself. Um, I don't have a staff or anything. It's just me. I work evenings after work and on the weekends. This is what I do. This is my big hobby. Uh, I did plant three ball and burlap trees this weekend other than this one. And I'm just, if I buy ball and burlap in the future, I'm just going to have someone else plant it for me. They're so heavy uh, that I just don't want to hurt myself. And they're really tough to wrestle with. So some of these things I've had sitting around. This is a Japanese maple that I got from the other house that I also dug up. I really like this variety. It's just a green one. Uh, let me see if I can find the tag. Oh yeah, there it is. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but you can see it there. It's a short, shorter Japanese maple. It'll contrast to this red leaf dogwood, which is a rose. What's this one called? Radiant Rose. Cornus Cusa Radiant Rose. This one gets, um, I think it's 20 foot tall and wide, so it could act potentially as kind of a shade replacement for this crab apple in the future. I'm sure that it probably grows maybe pretty slow, so uh, not terribly concerned there, but it will provide some protection from the sun to this bed later on. This is the Carolina Sweetheart Red Bud which typically exhibits more variegation, have heard, which you can see kind of on the leaves here, that it may take a couple years. With these trees that have weird like pink and white variegation, 
sometimes it takes those a few years being in the ground till they start exhibiting uh, that coloration. So I planted one of these before in the last garden. You know that one died if you've been following me for a few years. I got it online from an online source. It came with hardly any root system. All of the soil fell off the root ball when I got it at the house. Uh, it did not survive summer and did not come back in winter or the next spring. So this one I purchased locally, really good root system. I planted it at the other house at um, probably in May? No, no, that's wrong. I did a video planting this in November, I think, last year. It was one of the last things I planted at the last house. Well, I dug it up before we moved, before we even listed the house, because it was one of the last things I planted. I knew it wasn't terribly, like, super rooted in, and I wanted to take it with me because you can't find very many of them. So, uh, this one's been through a lot too. It was dug up and then stuck in a pile with everything else being watered in the shade for a while. So, I'm going to get drip on it. I have not come through and put drip on this bed yet. It's getting really late. Um, just keep everything watered through winter or through fall. And then hopefully it'll come back perfectly fine in the spring. This is just a conical U. I have some spaces open here to put stuff in the spring that I haven't quite decided yet. It, I didn't want to commit too hard on something that would eventually have to be removed with this juniper here. So I'll probably put a small ground thingy here, which I might do a ground hug aronia or some type of aronia that produces berries and blooms white, but um, it's kind of ground covery and would like this location. Down here, we have a sedum that I got from Walters that I'm trialing that I brought with me. It's called Midnight Velvet, really beautiful. And then we have a tiny dogwood. This is the one that's called uh, Benny Fuji. And it is more like a shrub form dogwood. It, over 10 years, it might get six foot tall and wide. And so I planted it behind this Japanese maple here. Um, and it will just kind of fill the space over a really long period of time and stay relatively small. It was a mad rush to get in all of the house plants. I just kind of protected them in the barn for right now uh, before I can get those brought inside um, and cleaned up because some of them look kind of rough because they've just been laying in a pile since we moved into this home without any attention. But I also addressed this area next to the fence. Uh, this is where there was a ton of grass uh, and it was a pain to dig up. Um, very, very difficult, and I'm hoping it don't start popping up in the spring. I uh, kind of destroyed these sedums with the tractor, trying to get the tractor in there just so I could lift the root balls out and dump them at the back of the property. But I stuck a banana from Natorps in here that was bred locally, and it's supposed to reliably come back in the zone. It, of course, does not produce bananas, but it'll be a beautiful foliage against the barn here. Uh, and I actually planted some hydrangeas in front of it uh, called pufferfish, and so that'll be an interesting combination of the planting. We'll see how that does. This butterfly bush is going to come out in the spring. You can see how wide the root ball is here. It's receded. I was pulling out them everywhere in here. Um, it at least needs to be cut back severely and then I might divide it and leave a portion of it. But on the other side I planted that um, double blue lilac that is going to fill this space. So might remove it completely since I'll have lots of other things the pollinators can love on. But what I'll probably do in another month um, or the next few weeks as we do get some more freezes and this dies back is I'll pile some more mulch around the trunk of this banana since it was kind of planted late to help make it through winter. Um, even though they're supposed to be hardier here, it's always helpful to give those a little more protection in our zone. And if you didn't believe me, here's where all the shrubs were. Um, just, you know, this past weekend. So we're going to leave this stuff here over winter uh, and I'll pick it up in the spring. Some of this I may use to build the path out front. I think there's a whole pallet of random rock just like this at the back of the property. I need to dig through. Um, but see, there's also some in here that are more square. I think these might be the ones at the back of the property and these would be perfect to edge the path with and I can fill it with gravel. So I got to do some looking around, see what we have there. Otherwise, this space is projected to be the vegetable garden in spring and we'll see what happens here. I know my focus this season is going to be doing a lot of other stuff rather than my vegetable garden. I would love to have some beds put in this space, but I might try since the ground in this back part of the property is so good. Um, 
everywhere I've dug, other than a few places up front, has been really wonderful soil. So I'll probably do some in-bed or in-ground planting here next year unless I come up with the plan for a vegetable garden. Uh, right now, the budget is mostly oriented towards plants um, and shrubs. Uh, I created a big dent in planting this season or this fall at this new property, but there's still a ton of area that can be planted up and needs to be cleaned up. And there's going to be some cost associated with uh, getting equipment, like equipment to edge all the beds and stuff for me quickly that I can do every year. Um, because those are tasks that take a lot of time. And if I can get something that helps me make that easier, uh, I'm going to do that just to save my neck, my back, and my well-being. And if I can get some assistance doing that type of stuff through power tools, um, and I love a good power tool, I know ladies can like power tools too, but this guy right here loves a good power tool, anything that can help me. So that will be something I'm going to be trying to obtain over this winter to help me in the spring. That'll make edging super simple. The tractor's been super helpful moving mulch. Um, so maybe I can have a slightly larger garden at this property than I had at the last one just because I had to do everything so much manual labor. There's still going to be a lot of cleanup in spring and fall, probably. Um, but I also can tackle those things more quickly because I don't have to worry about waiting for the trash to pick it up. I can stick it in the back of the corner, let it break down into compost, uh, leafy material, which I don't know if that's something I'll tackle next year, a compost pile. There's all sorts of things that this property is capable of allowing me to do. Um, and it's just going to be multiple years in the making. I did plant some quick fire, fi hi quick fire fab hydrangeas on the corner of the pool here uh, because this is going to be a bed next year and it's probably just going to be like a jut out here and be rounded and kind of come around. Uh, but I did not get to putting down any paper or mulch or anything. That's something that I can always do like in the colder months. Like I mentioned, the focus was um, planting right now. So I got one on either side. I only had two available. So there's one here, one down there on the other end. And we'll worry about creating those beds later. So I still have plenty of tasks to be done, but they're not planting related. So most of that will be done. I'll probably get these boxwoods um, tucked into their spot maybe later this week. I think we're supposed to have some warmer weather. It's supposed to get up to 75 again. Um, but otherwise, the focus is going to turn to cleanup um, and tasks like moving mulch to locations and creating more beds potentially for next spring planting. Thank you guys for joining me on this update. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care. Bye.